would have woken all of you up because after, I think after the lunch you are really a bit tired. Uh, I'm delighted to be here with my colleagues uh, from Bhutan. Sorry we could not get here in time. Um, so our apologies. But um, I feel a bit flattered by being called the chief guest. Um, and I do not, do not have, I would not like to really deliver the uh, talk on the state of education. I will do that one tomorrow. But today I have a message from Her Majesty the Queen Mother, Gertsin uh, Sering Pei Wongchuk. Uh, to us, to the 8th International Conference on Human Values in Higher Education. And Her Majesty, uh, the Queen Mother, uh, gives us the patronage on GNS values, on universal human values, or values in education, as we say. And she thinks this is very important. And therefore, I think uh, the conference had asked Her Majesty whether she could send us a message and uh, she has kindly um, agreed to do this one and her message is here so i'm delighted to read um, her message so you can see i've put don't look at me you can look at the queen mother <laughs> and say that she is actually reading this okay she is actually giving us this message so her majesty the queen mother gail Jung, Tseng Pei Wongchuk's message to the 8th International Conference on Human Values in Higher Education, IIT Banaras Hindu University, 1st to 3rd March 2019. Just reading it out. And I quote, I am happy to learn that the 8th International Conference of Human Values in Higher Education is being held in the historic city of Banaras, in IIT Banaras Hindu University. It was a privilege to attend the 7th International Conference of the Universal Human Values in Higher Education in Thimphu, Bhutan. I was delighted to learn about the work of Sri Ganesh Bagaria and his colleagues on Universal Human Values. Today, their hard work is appreciated and acknowledged by many renowned institutions and individuals. In Bhutan, universal human values is better understood as gross national happiness values. Under the leadership of our enlightened monarchs, His Majesty the Fourth King Jigme Singye Wangchuk and His Majesty the King Jigme Gesa Namgye Wangchuk, we have always tried to ensure that the happiness of the people is placed at the center of development, fostering a balance between the material and the spiritual well-being of our people. My own experience, having attended the Universal Human Values Conference in 2017 in Zimbabwe, was profound and it was evident why we need to include universal human values in all our formal and informal education systems worldwide. Universal human values must be a subject of importance in our workplace and homes. In, in, uh, in pursuit of personal happiness, the harmonious relationship within and with the rest of nature has degenerated. I believe this can be restored and nurtured if we truly understand the essence of our very being. I also believe that universal human values can be the start of the journey to gain this wisdom. As the president of the Bhutan Youth Foundation, Bhutan Youth Development Fund, which is a civil society organization founded by His Majesty the Fourth King of Bhutan. I established the Institute of Wellbeing in Bhutan with the aspiration that 
G and H values, gross national happiness values. And values based core programs would address the many challenges faced by our children and youth in a globalized world. The young people affected by drugs come for treatment at the institute and their recovery has been quite remarkable due to this unique treatment model. <coughs> Our conference like this creates the opportunity for like-minded persons and organizations to network and work together. The collective knowledge and wisdom will make our progress faster as time is of the essence in this rapidly dehumanizing world. I believe that each one of you, each one of the participants present here, is capable of changing our generation, our generation that will make the difference. I want to thank everyone for this wonderful opportunity and finally, I'd like to congratulate IIT Banaras Hindu University and the organizers of the conference and wish you all a successful summit. Tashi Dele means that the best of the best come. I have got this one printed and sent to me uh, in Her Majesty's can I hand it over? I do not know who is there from. Huh? Oh. So I'm delighted to hand over this uh, message. For the next part, I'd like to, um, I thought rather than talk about the big subject that uh, was announced, I think I'll reveal it over the, share some of that over the next two days. Uh, but today I thought, since it's the first day, I thought we will, I will uh, think about and remember uh, the history of the Universal Human Values International Conferences. Um, because it, it just helps to set a, set a tone to the discussions, the thinking, the background, the inspiration. I attended myself four of the eight international conferences, of course, including this one. Um, and I, I attended the first one. I was just checking whether that was the first one or the second one that I attended in Hyderabad. In Hyderabad in 2012, and that was the first one. So I'm happy to hear that I am, I attended the first one, and now I'm attending this one, uh, which means the eighth one. And um, the first one was very interesting. Um, the first one, in Triple IT Hyderabad, um, Myself sitting in Timpu and then thinking about going for this conference all the way to Tupanaya Haidi, Hyderabad was kind of really unimaginable. I, I could not think about it. But um, Professor Rajiv Sangal is here amongst us. Um, there. So he, if it was not for him, I would not have gone. He kept on insisting that I must, I must come and attend that international conference, the first one, in 2012. And the re reason that I decided to go, I mean, Professor Sangal I had met uh, as soon, almost as soon as I had become the Vice Chancellor of the Royal University of Utah, then in 2008 or 9, I had visited Hyderabad. And then, by chance, I went, we went to um, Triple IT Hyderabad. And it just struck, sometimes when you walk into an institution like that, you know something smells nice. And that was like that in Triple IT Hyderabad. That stayed in my mind. 
And then we had a rather longish chat with um, Professor Sangal as the director then. And I said, this is, uh, you felt very nice in that. Professor Sangal's company, as you walk to the stairs, as you walk to the toilet, everything seemed to be quite perfect. And I said, what is, what is this now? What, what is there? And only later on I learned that, um, that universal human values was something that they were experimenting in there. And for me, I hadn't heard about universal human values. And then I thought that was interesting. And that is one of the reasons why I decided to go for this uh, first conference in the IIIT Hyderabad. So I thought, by telling you this one, there is something, it does strike the minds of the young people. And then, in certain ways, it seemed to have the capability of changing people's mindset, the way that they think about themselves and the way that they behave with other people. It's just very subtle and that is, uh, that is very interesting and I, I thought I must, uh, I must say this today. <coughs> but that incident <coughs> changed my mind, changed my life. Uh, if that did not happen, I would not be uh, here today and I would not be working on the Bhutan Institute of Wellbeing. So I think this is very, very uh, significant. And Professor Sangal's work down there later on, then I thought I must find out. This is an opportunity for me to find out a little bit more about why IIIT Hyderabad is like that. Why does it smell like that? Why does it have that scent? Why does it have that air? of responsibility, orderliness, nobody telling people, but things happen gently, and that really struck me. But as the conferences, as all conferences go, um, the conference itself was a series of speakers. There were some <coughs> distinguished uh, speakers like, uh, of course, Ganesh, Sri Ganesh Bagaria was there. But also, I did not know Sri Ganesh Bhagaria then. Um, it didn't even strike another speaker. Sandoran Bhutia was there, another speaker. There's quite a lot of interesting speakers, but conferences normally you don't listen, no? <laughs> they just go there and then we think about shopping and that see the city. That is what conferences is all about. So I didn't pay much attention, but then this all happened. Then, the magic happened at airport. I, I went back after the conference, nothing, it's just a normal conference. I just attended, I talked about GNH. Uh, the people got interested about GNH and there were articles and papers written, uh, you know, uh, about GNH, but nothing too much happened. So I headed back home to go to the, um, to go back home. But the magic happened, as I'm saying here, Oops. Is it no? number three. Yeah. Okay. So at the airport, I just put it as books, overweight feelings, and vanity. Quite often, most of the important things don't quite happen in the conference like this because it should be good food and everything else. But happen on the sidelines, and this is what happened at the airport. At the airport, the on the they had given me some books on universal human values. I hadn't even looked, but then, then I thought I must be I must diligently carry it home. And then at the airport, I found that I was overweight. I had to make some payments. So as I was coming back to pay, uh, make my payments, then I saw Ganeshji coming out. And then I found out that Ganeshji is actually on the same plane with me. So anyway, I made my payments and then Ganeshji, we had quite some time after that. And Ganeshji insisted that we must have some coffee together. And I realized later on 
when it actually doesn't take too much coffee, but he was just doing it for me, and then, you know, uh, it was bound to happen like this. So we sat in anyway, uh, coffee. And sometimes, it's not what people say, but what people do, that strikes you, and that makes an impression. And of course, your own um, issues that you have <coughs> at hand, official, personal <coughs> And that's what happened. We went for the coffee. Of course, the coffee was very nice. We, we sat down. And um, when uh, we said, okay, Ganesh, he, he looked quite poor. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, let me pay for the coffee. And he said, no, no. This is India. And in India, I pay. <laughs> and then, as he got to pay, and then I'm just watching, you know, this interesting man. <laughs> and then he took out this yellow, uh, you know, uh, envelope, and uh, blew it into it, and then took out the note, <laughs> and paid co for the coffee. <laughs> I thought he needed not much money there, but I think he had enough money for the coffee. <laughs> so anyway, that coffee was paid, and then, we were then going and finishing, um, going to the plane, to board the plane, and then we were going to the escalators. And something that he told me also sort of made an impact on me. And he said, these escalators, you know, sometimes they are dangerous. I once fell down on these escalators because I don't travel much on the planes, and uh, I normally travel on the trains. So, I mean, that is another impression that left in my mind. I said, I must, I must, this is very interesting now. Okay, and that is, and in the plane, of, of course in the coffee, coffee shop we talked about it, I'm just a little bit dramatizing now. <laughs> and then as we went in the plane, oh, we could sit together and we had time to talk all the way from, um, you know, um, Hyderabad to Delhi in a long time. And I had, at that time, had quite a lot of problems. Nobody wants to be warden. I was the vice chancellor in my colleges. Nobody wanted to be warden and matrons. We made some nice bungalows for these wardens to stay. We thought we'd entice them. But nobody wants to stay. It's very problematic. Then I had nothing to offer as a vice chancellor. No training. How can I train wardens? You know, because the kids, the youth being what they are, it's problematic. Sometimes you can't sleep. <coughs> so, I found out that there was a workshop on human values happening. What is it about? Two weeks from the time that we met, and I said, I must say this. I think this now I have something for my wardens to give. So all my dean of students and one or two of my staff should go to this workshop. So they came, and this is how I came. Then we got connected to these universal human values. And when I came back, of course, I spent quite some time, uh, some money, because and I had to really steal it, <laughs> twist my accountant's hands to get that money, because it was about 10 lakhs that came to at the end of it, sending about 20, 25 people. <coughs> So I want to check at the end and say what happened when they come back. What went? I said, oh Lord, it was very nice. Normal things, let me say. <coughs> now, what did you really learn? So they had some authentic things to say. One fellow said, uh, clerk, an assistant that we sent from my own office because otherwise I had to do the running round. And if he, if I send somebody else, he is convinced he will do all that, all that work of running around. So I asked him, okay, you went, so what did you learn? And he said, all these nice things about it. And I said, I'm not convinced. What, what did you really learn? <clears throat> then he thought about it and said, if I did not go to this Universal Human Values Workshop, this shoe that I bought would have cost about 1,500 euros. Uh, rupees. This shoe, I bought it by 500 rupees, so I saved 1,000. So that is the value. <laughs> so, 
I got convinced. Then I asked the colleges. Then they are saying some interesting, quite authentic stories about what happened to them. And that is how we how we got into this. Uh, uh, that is how I how I come to attend the last this one eight <coughs> conference now here, and we have been engaged. So I thought I must tell this story because it does tell about the universal human values, what it does, because it just gets you connected to yourself. And I was thinking that is what we were talking about in the session that we have just concluded. Doesn't matter whether you talk about Islamic, Buddhist, Sikh, Vedic traditions, it is the human person that we are talking about. All these religions, what we call the religions, are tackling the human person. And so long as we are studying the human being, it can connect. And that's universal human values. That's allowed to do that one. And I thought this uh, story is therefore very important. The next part of this, I would like to talk a little bit about these international <laughs> conferences. It's international. We are attending this international conference, no? It's the eighth one. I don't know, some people I've met before, but I think <coughs> many of them are new. This international conferences, I've attended many international conferences as the secretary, as the education, uh, as the vice chancellor. Mm. And I thought there are many types, but generally I thought there were two types. One is expensive. It's the international conferences are very expensive. You either get paid or you have to pay. Two things that happen in these big conferences. What else? Whatever. It's a huge operation in organization. <coughs> and organized in big five-star international hotels. This that's a big fan here. Many important people come and say things and they forget it after they <laughs> after they go past the conference hall. <coughs> then the second one, like this one, International Conference for Higher Education in uh, human, human values in higher education. The organizers have no money. No money at all. I know when it's the graduation. <laughs> they have no money. Then, and you don't get paid. And you are not expected to pay also. You get it? You are not paid and you are not expected to pay. When we come here, we get food, we get everything else. And we don't pay. Then, but you can't back out. <laughs> this is a conference, you cannot back out. That is why I'm here. In the 8th International Conference. Not only in the conference, you can't, you can't back out of anything. <laughs> and this is, of course, inspired by uh, Inspired and organized this international conference. I was just sitting, just sitting in the dark watching this happening. Actually, this is inspired and organized by two people. One is Ganesh Bhavariya Ganeshji and Raju, uh, Raju, who is working 24 by 7 as his secretary. <laughs> And sometimes, <laughs> when there's no money at all, maybe uh, Rajul might put out his uh, some money and say, okay, pay, pay this one. <clears throat> and of course, with the unwavering support of their spouses, Benishti's wife, his extended family, Rajulji's wife, and the extended family, and of course we become the extended family after that. So this is how this workshop is run. And I have gone and stayed in Kanpur and I know this is operated from Ganeshji's backyard, our international conference. 
And they can relentlessly pursue. You must have got a uh, lot of letters and telephone calls and everything else. And this is how it's done. And here we are. We are here with all this. So thank you, Kanishki, Rajivinji, and all the people who, uh, who organized this. And I think all these big, meaningful things, actually, if you look at in history, this is how it happens. You don't need money. You need commitment, you need understanding. So we need understanding, we need commitment. And this is how it is done. Many, many of these great things that are really meaningful are pushed like this. And you don't really need that much resources, but you need knowledge, you need commitment. I and mean, if you have the knowledge, you can't back out anyway. You have to have the commitment because you have no other choice <laughs> but to work. Okay. So I was just thinking, how, how, is, how are these conferences changing? I've been watching these conferences happen <coughs> in details of how it is, uh, how it is organized how the details are thought about, how are we engaged when we are here in the conferences. And I see that there is a continual, continual development in the form and the style. I was watching the first one, uh, the engagement wasn't that much. Um, that is why I had to meet Kaneshiki at the airport to make a meaningful uh, dent on, on my life. Um, so I think there are many ways that I see it can engage and you will see what happens in the next three days. And then it's effective in roping in and engaging institutions and even countries slowly, slowly. Each, each uh, conference I see more people being roped in, more institutions being roped in. Roped in meaning for good effect, learning to live like a human being. And, the, and our network is widening. Each time we meet, I see more people from more organizations, sometimes some more countries. And then this has to happen. I think, therefore, I think the international conferences are, this international conference is very, very important for us to meet once a year. Because we are starting a movement. This has to happen as a movement. I can see actually what uh, what this can do because we are learning about ourselves. And I think uh, in my in my later talks and discussions, I will mention this. But one thing that uh, really is quite startling, it seems to work for all ages because all are human beings, and we are talking about human beings. And I've been just recently in a, um, a reform center, a center of our juveniles who are uh, young, aged. You cannot put them into prison, but I think it is a prison lockup. They have gone into some crimes. And one person who told this one is really struck um, as something that's really revealing. And what this person was said is, you know, this is something, and I did the three, three, three days of human values for these people, young people, in, in prison. This fellow said, you know, this is something that my parents did not teach me. This is something my teachers did not teach me in this school. If I had learned about myself before, a little bit like this, of what you taught, what you talked about in the three days of this workshop, I might not be here. So that is the that is that is the power. This is the movement that we have to uh, we have to carry carry forward. And I thought just talking about this is quite important for us, just to inspire ourselves. <coughs> Finally, here we are in Banaras Hindu University. I wasn't going to come, but I am here. 
Um, those of you who are, who are here must have battled it in your mind whether to go or not to go and then um, and how finally you came here. Myself, I have battled it in my mind and there are some reasons why I decided to go, come and this is some of the reasons. I thought, oh, Banaris, when you talk about Banaris, you, you think about, oh, it's a little bit interesting. Somehow it connects in your heart. It's a little bit magical, historical, cultural. This rich city, and therefore, somehow you want to go, but then I think I can't. Then, Banaris Hindu University, you get to read a little bit about Banaris Hindu University. It's interesting how this gentleman started this and got so much land and how it is serving all the people. Very, very interesting. And then you talk about Triple IIT Hyderabad, no, triple IIT in a university. Normally, IITs are separate institutions and IIT in a university is very unique. So, I thought this, must, uh, this is interesting. Then, of course, Rajiv Sangal. Rajiv Sangal was the founding director of this, institu this institute. And I know he has been working this, with this universal human values here. I want to see what happened. What is it? Has it got the same scent as I felt, as I smelled in Triple IT Hyderabad? How is it? And, and the other one, of course, who are coming to these conferences, you meet sometimes magic. <coughs> like I met Kaneshi, Rajiv Sangha, and there are probably one or two here. And I thought, who knows, I might meet some magical people that make a difference, that make this thing move. And of course, the last one is, this is where Lord Buddha first taught Varanasi, Saranasi, where he turned the will of Dharma, meaning the will of the truth, and the universal human values really is trying to find out the truth about ourselves, nothing else. So th that is why I thought, that's why I'm here. And, as I said, if we were not merited, we will not be here. None of you will be here. You were merited, you had what we call the karmic connection <coughs> to this conference. And we are here on a mission of changing the world. <coughs> I really sincerely believe in it. How about you? Yeah. I somehow think in the, at, the deep, uh, at the deepest of my heart that we can change the world, that one individual can change the world. Here we have got one individual like Kaneshji, Rajiv, Rajiv Samuel, and many of you in different places working. And what, what it does, as I, as I see it in my mind, is that Berlin Wall was built in the imagination of one person. It was also broken <coughs> in the imagination of one person. This can happen. I think actually this universal human values has got the power of changing the world order as it is because the world order as it is is actually destroying the world. And we can change it. And here we are. And I hope that uh, when we go back you will have your magical presence to take back home and we will be together in this movement to change the world. And with this, I'd like to wish every one of you feel welcome to come to this conference in our family and then um, also wish that you will have your presence to take back home in special different ways. Thanks so much. <laughs>